So Gabe requested that I make a video to solve some problems on our calculator because I went really fast. And so this is your reference video. Um, I'm just going to go through this problem right here and go through some of the different things you can find. So I have, I'm going to clear out these other equations I have. I'm going to put, the first thing I'm going to do is solve this for y if it's not already solved for y. And I'm going to put that in my calculator. And graph it. See if my scale is any good. That's the first thing you need to be able to do is adjust your window. Um, right now I can't see the bottom of my parabola. I can't see the minimum. So I'm going to make the Y minimum go a little bit smaller. And I know it goes down to negative 15 at least. So now I can see all the parts I need to see. I can see both of the zeros and I can see the min. So let's go through the question here. It says find the Y intercept. The Y intercept is when X is zero. You can plug in zero up here. The Y intercept would be negative uh, 15. Find the equation of the axis of symmetry. For algebra, you can use negative B over 2A. But here you can calculate the minimum. Now if you notice down here, I'm going to the left of the minimum. I'm going to hit enter to the right of the minimum. Enter. And then I'm going to make a guess that's right on the minimum. So now I have the axis of symmetry is x equals 1. And so I can, I can write that as that question. That's also going to tell me the vertex. If it asks me, there is the coordinate of the vertex. I have it 1, negative 16. So you just got to keep the terms straight. The other thing that might be new for some of you is calculating the x-intercepts. And so you can uh, do that by factoring or you can go to calculate zero. That's another name for an x intercept is a zero. And then you have to surround. So I'm going to go on the left side and the right side. And I'm going to take a guess. So negative three, zero. One thing that we know about parabolas is they have symmetry. And so if the x-intercept is negative three and my line of symmetry is at one, that's four away on a distance right here horizontally. That means I go four again that way to get to the other one. That would be five. Or you can calculate it again. The other place you might look is in your table. And depending on your, the way your table is set, you might be able to see that the, the x-intercept is when y is 0. You could also find the y-intercept when x is 0. Um, that pretty much is what they're asking for. You sketch a graph. When you sketch a graph, you need to make sure you can see all those important points. So I can see the minimum, which is the vertex, the y-intercept, both x-intercepts. So that would be a good window. In IB, when you graph the window, uh, you can just label these outside edges. Okay, let's go to another one. Use your calculator to find the coordinates of the points of intersection. So this is using a calculator to solve a system of equations. So to do that, I need to put both equations in. And a system has a solution where the two functions intersect. So that's what I'm going to be looking for, where they're intersecting. Again, it helps to know what you're looking for before you're just graphing random stuff. Like, oh, look nice. So I'm going to graph these. I might have to adjust my window. So there's the line. There's the parabola. So I could adjust the window. And that's up to you if you want to take it back to the standard window. It's usually where we start. So the place I need to find are, are the two points where the line crap crosses the graph. So I'm going to go to calculate intersection. It's going to say first curve and it tells you up here that y1 is 2x minus 9. Hit enter. Second curve, there's the parabola. Hit enter. And then it's going to say make a guess because there's two answers. So one of my answers is right here. 
And then, so that's 2.28. That would be the answer there. And I have to do it again. Calculate intersection. First curve, enter. Second curve, enter. And then my guess this time needs to be back here. 0.219. So those are the two places that curve intersects. Uh, if you want to see a little closer, you could change the window. But if we're just calculating, that's all you do. The last thing is using your calculator to help you solve and factor. So solve means set equal to zero. And so don't try to solve it unless you've set it equal to zero. 3x squared I'm out in the hallway right now, so it could get a little crazy in a second. Minus 12. So now that I set that equal to zero, I get everything on one side. And if I graph it, I would be basically finding where y is zero if I can find the x-intercepts of this thing. And it looks like they're nice numbers. I don't believe it, though. So I'm going to calculate the zero this time. So there's multiple things you can calculate. You have to know what you're looking for. So there's this left side, and then on the right side, and then I'm going to make a guess. So negative 3, 0. Now, those of you that are uh, ah, factorers, you know that. So many freshmen out in the hallway. Those of you that are factors know that um, that means that if I have a zero at negative three, that one of my factors is x plus three. I'm trying to get the little thing to show up there, but it won't. What happens when you make a video out in the hallway? So you can use this to, if it asks you to factor this, uh, you could do it by knowing, I know the one factor is x plus 3, which means my other factor has to be uh, whatever multiplies to give me uh, 3x squared, which would be three x, and then whatever I multiply the 3 by to get negative 12, which would be negative 4. So it's a way you can you can use the calculator to factor. Um, see if I can get it to write on here. So when I know that one of my factors was x plus three, I believe you can use it to cheat factor a little bit. I know this has to be 3x now because 3x times x is 3x squared, and then minus 4 because when I bring this 12 over, that's how I graphed it. So that was really a minus 12. So you can factor that way. You can factor x method if you want. Um, but factoring and solving go together because the zeros. The solutions here are when you set this equal to zero, but you get there by factoring or graphing. There, that's enough stammering and stuttering and bumbling for you.